to the children of Israel, I say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, Okay, fine. What's his name? What's his name? What shall I say to them? And Moses was pretty bright. What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. In the King James it says, I am that I am. In other translation it says, I am because I am. <laughs> Anybody had your parent tell you, just do it because I said to. <laughs> I am because I am. He says, I am because I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. I am. And I've always kind of wondered about that. Why did God call himself I am? I am. If you read it in the Hebrew, you can kind of see that when Abraham, he was Abram to begin with, but when his name was changed, he became Abraham. He became like God. He became Abraham. Isn't that interesting? God wants us to receive this I am. What is he saying to us? If you can catch the vision of what God's doing, he says, I am limitless. I am your fortress. I am your promise. I am your provision. I am your power. I am whatever you need. I am. I really like to hear that. Anybody need a deliverance today from something? You ever had a paper come in the mail and you said, oh my, oh, I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. How am I going to deal with this? And the Lord would say to you, I am the one that will deal with it. Oh, I love that. If you count on I am, he says, I am bringing you a spouse. I am your job. I am the favor. I am a receiver is what you need to say. I'm a receiver of what God said. Now he has promised this. In the scripture, when I was going through Bible school, they used to show us all kinds of stuff in there and said you need to learn this stuff, the weeks, the 70 weeks. You need to learn about the feast of weeks and learn about the feast of the unleavened bread and learn about the manna of God. He said this is what the, the Bible says if you look at what God is. He is the feast of weeks. He is the unleavened bread. He is the manna from heaven. He is the morning star. He is the true vine. He is the redeemer. He is the final offering. Amen. Amen. But we see all those things and say that's kind of put in an old timey terms there. That's, a, that's way back there. That's a long time ago. How are we supposed to adapt to that for today? So I said you know we need an updated version of the I am. Are you with me? He says I am your rent. <laughs> I am your car payment. Amen. He said, I am whatever you need. He said, I am your marriage counselor. I am your, your healing for your household. Amen. With this updated version comes the power of vision for all your needs being met. For Moses, he was the bread from heaven in the wilderness. He was the water in the rock. The Bible says that everything will change according to the needs. You got a different need, he make a change. He took him up to the Red Sea. He says, it's no big deal. I'll make a change. Watch this. The sea opened up. He said, I'll be the divider. I'll open up the sea. You walk through on dry ground. And he went, Poof. and he blew and all the ground dried up. And they walked through. Well, hallelujah. This is something God wants to do. He says, I'm ready to change to be whatever you need. He said, now God doesn't change, but he'll He'll change the way he brings you provision. He'll change the way he brings you provision. We get kind of clumsily excited about God making provision sometimes. And we get, we get to receiving it in a certain way. We think it's always going to be that way. It's going to always be that way. Well, God doesn't always give you what you need in that manner. According to Philippians 4.19, it says, My God shall supply all your need. Yes. Needs change. Needs change. Some people that come to marriage counseling, I used to call it divorce counseling because it seemed like they came at the last minute on the way out. 
But people that come to marriage counseling sometimes can't adapt to one another because they haven't learned how to meet the needs of the person as they change their needs. You know people's needs change? You can take an 18 year old and you can meet their needs. But when they're 35, you can't keep meeting them with the needs of the 18 year old. You know when a child is small they have certain needs. And you can say, here, here's a big fluffy bunny. But when they're 35, you give them a big fluffy bunny. It doesn't meet their needs. Are you with me? And this is what God says. I'm going to meet your needs according to your changing. As you change and you need and you have different needs, I'll meet that need. We've got to assume that God is giving us the power of vision so we can know exactly what it is we need and God can provide. He's the provider of our needs. Amen. Amen. Now, when, without vision, we have no power to perform what he said to do. Without the vision, you have no power to perform what he said to do because you can't know where to focus. I know some people that have no focus on life. Don't know where they're going. Don't know what they're going to do. So they get up and they go, well, here we are another day. What are you going to do? I don't know. You know, I don't mind if you have a day or two where you don't know. But if you've got years or two that you don't know, there's something wrong. you got to get on with the program. Because God makes provision. Now, here's what's important. Evidently, without vision, the people perish. Vision must be evidently very important. It must be very important to keep your survival. Otherwise you die. You, you dry up. You lose your value. God makes provision for those that can see. Now let me give you an information. There are several kinds of provision. And I wrote down a few. I can't even describe to you all the ways he say, he's given me that provision comes. But I'm going to do my best to try to describe one or two of them today and save some more for next month. Are you with me? Now, this morning, I want you to hear about temporary provision. Temporary provision. Just because you received it temporary doesn't mean it's going to be like that always. Because if you keep trying to get it always the way you have been getting it, it's going to be perverted. God is giving you temporary provision like he did to the children of Israel when they went into Egypt. The reason they went to Egypt was to get a temporary provision. It was never meant to last a long time. It was a temporary provision while there was a drought. They went to the place where God was giving them provision temporarily. It was not meant to, for them to stay forever. It was a temporary provision. It's not intended for long term. But when he develops you, when he builds you up, when he, he strengthens you from the inside, you're capable of going to a different kind of provision. From the temporary position, provision, you got to see he's trying to temporarily provide you so that you get enough temporary provision. You say, okay, I got to go. And you start moving forward and you don't want to go back. If you decide to go back, you're trying to pervert the provision. Amen. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Amen. Genesis chapter 15. Look what it says right there. Yeah, 15. Is that where we are? Yeah. Genesis 15, 13. And it starts right there in 13. It says, Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. He's given them a prophecy. This clear back in Genesis 15 did not even take place until Genesis 45. This was a prophecy that he was giving them. And they will be afflicted for 400 years. Because he's given them a prophecy saying they're afflicted because they hang on to the temporary provision. They're afflicted. Now look at Proverbs, or excuse me, Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45. It gets into verse 4. 
And the reason they're in this kind of a place is because God took them over to the place where there was kind of a famine going on. And look at it says in Genesis 45 verse 4. And Joseph said to his brothers, please come near to me. So they came near and he said, I'm Joseph. You know, the last time they saw him, he was a blessing in seed form. They didn't even know that he was going to be a blessing. They didn't know the vision was going to come out of him. He was being, uh, they stole his coat and put him in a, in a big old pit and sold him off. Man, they didn't even like this brother. And he said, I am Joseph. I'm the one that you didn't want. You hated me. You did awful to me. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me. <laughs> Don't be angry. For God sent me before you to preserve life. The reason I'm here is to preserve life. For these two years of famine have been in the land. And there is still five more years in the land. And there is neither plowing or harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve posterity for you in the earth. And to save your lives by great deliverance. Amen. Amen. So now it was not that you have sent me here, but it was God that sent me here. And he has made me the father to Pharaoh and the lord of this house and a ruler throughout the land of all Egypt. Now hurry up and go and get my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord in Egypt. Come down to me and do not tarry. I'll tell you what, this is a really good story that happened to Joseph. A man that could not be, put, you can't keep a good man down. And this is what the Lord brought him into and said, you're going to be the kind of, of man that helps to save the posterity of your family. This is a wonderful thing. Anybody know anything about Joseph and his family? How many of the children of Israel went into Egypt? It wasn't all the children of Israel. It was Joseph and his family. He brought his family in. Anybody know how many? According to Bible scholars, there's about 70 of them. Wow. You say that was the posterity of all Israel was 70 of them? According to the scriptures, there's about 70 of them that showed up in the land of Egypt. But they multiplied. And they multiplied. And they multiplied. As a matter of fact, in a short period of time, there's two and a half million of them. Over 400 years. Are you with me? But they were in a temporary provision. And they had to be forced out of Egypt. Amen. They were in a temporary provision. And this kind of temporary provision does not last forever. If God gives you a temporary provision, you're to enjoy it, you're to maximize it, you're to get the best use out of it, but prepare for a change. Something's coming up. Prepare for a change. Now this early stage of Egypt was a temporary provision and provided, it was a, listen, it provided the fact, this is proof, perfect, that God can use heathens to bless you. <laughs> God can use heathens to bless you. You know, I got interviewed by a radio station. They brought me in and they put the radio up there and they asked me some questions, you know, about the Lord. And this lady asked me to kind of take over her radio station. She was doing some, you remember that she had me, she had me come and sit in and Bible questions. Anybody could call in Bible questions and they could ask me anything, anything. And people would call and they asked me questions. I tell them what the Bible said and I tell them exactly what I said. Let me show you the scripture. I didn't have anything prepared. It was scripts that was coming in right now. And they said, you must have something prepared. I said, the Lord's got this all prepared because I'll just show you where it is. I don't know the Bible in every single verse, but I do know this, that God knows it. Yes. And so I'm going to tell you what he said. I'm telling him all these things. And one of the people called in and said this. I can't believe you're on that radio station. I said, why is that? They said, that's a heathen station. You don't know much about them. They sometimes say foul words. They sometimes talk about other people. And they're all the time given insinuations about sexual connotation. There's something wrong with that station. I said, well, praise God. Hallelujah. They said, how dare you sit on there and talk about the Lord like that? I said, let me tell you something. The wealth of the sinner has been laid up for the just. They're paying for me to talk about the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 
You know, I, I looked at it like this. I had some people just two, two weeks ago. Had a guy sit in Starbucks and he said, I, I got to ask you a question. I see you got a book there that talks about Bible study. Uh, are, you, are you a Christian? I said, yes, matter of fact, I'm a pastor. He said, well, good, good. I'll ask you a question. If somebody was going to give you a lot of money and they got this money in an unscrupulous way and, and they, they got it from Las Vegas. Yeah, they got it from Las Vegas. They gave you money from Las Vegas. Would you take that money? I said, yes. I pray over that money. I put it into the work of the gospel. And they said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me that you take that money that's been touched by sin and you put that money in where the gospel is. I said, yes, I take every bit of that money. Are you telling me that only people that beat their wife and folks that, that have a problem with, you know, with cursing, they're the only ones that can give to the gospel? He said, what do you mean? I said, other people that come to church. He said, oh, well, I, I didn't think about that. <laughs> I'll take anybody's money. They want to give the money of the gospel. Are you with me? This is what the Lord said. Egypt was in a temporary state of provision. And God can provide even heathen people to give you money. He can provide atheist people to give you money. It doesn't have to be just because you had Christians give you the money. Now, I appreciate Christians that give, but God can use a donkey once. Are you with me? He's going to use them. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22, I just quoted that, but it says, The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Amen. It's laid up for the just. He promised us that. He blessed me. Whether, I, whether it was from a Christian or not a Christian, he blessed me. Whether I got a job or not a job, he still blessed me. If I got a vision that I've been taken care of from the Lord, whether I'm on track with work or not, he's still blessing me. Are you with me? He said, I'm trying to get it to you and I will get it to you. It's a blessing for you however it comes. He gives me every time. He gives me money. But it's not the same method. It's not the same method. He's had me find money before. He sent me money through the mail. He's had heathens give me money. I've had people give me stuff. They didn't even know why they were doing it. I don't know why I'm doing this. I said, well, go ahead and give it to me. I don't know why you're doing it either except the Lord. And I just took it. Now, we've talked about God providing for us in temporary provision. But you know what? The next step, I'm just going to cover two today. The next step is called daily provision. Daily provision. Daily provision. According to the Bible, whether it's with people or without people, he can give you daily provision. Daily provision. Exodus chapter 16. Look there in verse 9. Exodus 16. Moses spoke to Aaron. He said, say to the congregation of the children of Israel, come near before the Lord. He has heard your complaints. And now it came to pass as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation, the children of Israel, that they looked towards the wilderness and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them and say this, at twilight you shall eat meat. And in the morning you shall be blessed and filled with bread. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it was that the quails came up in the evening and covered the camp. You know when I was in Bible school they said, Do you know how many quails it takes to feed two and a half million Jews every day? The quail are coming along and they're flying. Now there's two and a, at least two and a half million quail are flying along every day. T t t come on now, two and a half million quail every day. They're flying along and all of a sudden they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. they have a heart attack and fall right there. Are you with me? They're just dead right in front of the congregation and they come out and gather up and eat the quail. Hallelujah. This is a miracle of God. 
It's a miracle of God. He provided daily provision for them according to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to him and said, I heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them and say, at twilight you're going to eat meat. In the morning you're going to be filled with bread. This is called the manna. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So what was the quails came in the evening, covered the camp, and in the morning the dew laid on the ground and there was a layer of dew that lifted and the surface of it was in the wilderness a small round substance as fine to the frost of the ground. It was called manna. And they ate every day. You know they couldn't take enough meal for the next day. They had to have daily provision. Some of us would like to have everything set up for our future. I want it all set up for my future. But you're going through a something. You're no longer in a place where you're just having something for temporary provision. But now God's putting you something called daily provision. And the reason you're in daily provision is so you get completely, completely committed to the hand of the Lord providing no matter what. He's providing for you no matter what. It's daily provision. And while you're going through daily provision, no more for tomorrow. You can't get enough for the weekend. It's daily provision. Man, you are praying all the time. Are you with me? Oh, Lord, take care of me. Lord Jesus, this take care of me today. Amen. Anybody ever weaned a baby? Anybody ever seen a baby weaned? Anybody know what I'm talking about, weaned a baby? Ain't no hands going up, so nobody here's ever seen a baby. Okay, so babies, when they're getting off of a bottle, they call it weaning. They call it weaning. They're going to get rid of the bottle, and it's called weaning. So what does the baby do when you're giving them a bottle, and you're getting rid of the bottle, and you say, okay, now you're going to a sippy cup. And the kid goes, he goes, well, all right, that'll be fine. I mean, no, that's not exactly what they say. That's not, that's not exactly what they say. What does the kid do? He uses two vowels. W-A, W-A, W-A. It's wah, it's wah, and he just keeps saying that. Because the baby thinks he's dying because his provision is changing. Yes. It's come to me in one way. I can't think of any other way that it's going to come to me. <laughs> that's the way you've always given it to me. And if anything changes, it's going to kill me. Because, see, that's a baby reaction. Amen. So when God changes the way it comes, quit crying. When God's in the middle of changing something, man, we're crying. We tell me, oh, Jesus, Jesus, I used to have provision coming in all the time. But let's just pray for me. Pray for me. It's getting bad out here. Because we're kicking and screaming and crying and complaining. And then when it's all better, we go, I don't know what I was complaining about. Because <laughs> it finally changed. And it all, we got used to the new provision. And we're okay. We can kind of see... Elijah standing in the creek and he says he's got the creek water coming through and he's got the, the birds coming and bringing him food in a day and he's like whoa I got this I'm on a man I'm right here at the creek I, this, my, this is a life right here retirement man I got me creek I got me creeks in a oh that sounds good I go to sleep easy I eat this food every day and the creek dried up and the birds stopped coming and you know what we do we go out in the middle of the creek and we'll, I command you in the name of Jesus <laughs> <laughs> start flowing <laughs> because we can't see the provisions change when the Lord already told him I told you to go into town I already prepared a widow woman she going to take care of you we can't see the change so we don't want it to change because we like things to be the same and when God's making this change of the temporary provision it's into daily provision if you make the temporary permanent it's perverted. It's perverted. Don't fall in love with how he does it. Fall in love who does it. Amen. That's why some people have got their eyes off of God and got their eyes on their job. It's because it's a provider and they forgot to look at God instead of the job. 
So they love their job or they're, they're sold out to their job. And if their job tells them they have to do something, they'll do that. God tells them to do something. They go, but it doesn't pay. So we have to watch that we don't get caught up in that. The will of God is to bless you. He wants to pour out his blessing upon you. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 32, it said, It is my Father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. Little flock. In John 15 and verse 8, he says that this is my Father and he is glorified. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. You bear much fruit. And then you shall be my disciples. You bear much fruit. Now, listen to what he said. It's not a small thing. He's not small thinking. Everything that God has given you is significant. It's significant. It's changing. The way he's providing for you is changing. Get ready to receive it. Come on now. Some people got hooked up on this is the only way it comes in. I can't see it coming in any other way. Some people are so hooked up that they finally got an income check that's for the rest of their life. They're thinking, well, I'm on a budget. I got to require a budget. And so they got small thinking because they can't see it coming in any other way. And so they're locked in and locked out of the total blessing. God wants it to come other ways. The children of Israel, after they went through the Red Sea, come on, they went through the Red Sea. The Red Sea comes back over. And crushes the army of Pharaoh. Crushes the army of Pharaoh. And while they are gone, crushing the army of Pharaoh. Pharaoh's gone. There's no more Pharaoh. There's no more army chasing them. But while they're there, what did they say to Moses? Let's go back. We should have gone back. You know, we, at least they provided... At least we had leeks and garlic. But they beat you, man. But we had leeks and garlic. But, but they did cruel things to you. But we had leeks and garlic. <laughs> now they're in the wilderness. Now they're in big trouble. Let me tell you something. Trouble is always a preparation for testimony. You got to see this thing from God's perspective. I was sitting there yesterday trying to see this, how God would see it. These are the children of Israel. For heaven's sake, they're out there in the wilderness. And the people didn't want to obey. They got drug out of that provision that they were having, man. They were having temporary provision. They got moved out to the wilderness to get that daily provision. But while they're in the middle of doing this, I said, oh, i got to see this from God's perspective. Why are these people having so much trouble? Because it's a bad date. Now let me explain. They're courting. God is courting them to love him in the manner to which he's asking them to love him. And it's a daily thing. He's doing something for them daily. But the children of Israel can't respond to God because they don't trust him enough yet. They haven't seen him provide daily. They saw Israel get their food from Egypt. They didn't see God do this. But God's showing himself strong. He's doing this through the provision. It's called the power of vision. He moved them out by plagues. He moved them out by the Red Sea. He brought them a pillar of cloud at night. A pillar of fire by day. He brought them manna. He brought them water. He brought them all this stuff. It's daily provision. It's completely daily provision. But the people were not yet convinced because they'd been in bondage 400 years. And they'd always had food. And they had a place to stay. They worked really hard. But here they are at this place. And you got to see according to the scriptures. When Joseph actually died. The next Pharaoh that took over. Realized. You know there's a whole bunch of them. They've already multiplied to two and a half million. For heaven's sake. Let's go enslave them. That's how they got in slavery to begin with. And he enslaved them because he was afraid of them. 
Because he said they might hook up with some foreign government and come in and attack us. So let's go put them as slaves. That's how they got in slavery to begin with. But they got used to it. You can get used to unusual circumstances. And you can live with degrading circumstances. And they did. It was uncomfortable. And the children of Israel are now in a dating relationship with the Lord. And it's an uncomfortable date. They don't enjoy it because they don't trust him. And so he's providing for them. showing himself strong. But he's providing and they don't trust him yet because they haven't had enough experience. Hey, they've had weeks and weeks and weeks of experience, but it's not enough for them. And so they've seen it happen according to the scriptures in Matthew 6 and 9. It says, after this manner Jesus said, pray, or the fa she said this, pray this, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread. You know he even said that there daily bread. There's more other, there's other ways for provision to come but unless you learn the daily bread you don't rely on the Lord all the time. You got to rely on the Lord all the time to get to the next phase. Many people are trying to get to some kind of permanent provision and they haven't learned about daily bread so they can't trust the Lord. This is the trusting the Lord part right here. And the children of Israel going through the trusting of the Lord part. And like it says in Exodus chapter 16, we read this, but starts in verse 9. And Moses spoke to Aaron, Say to the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord. He has heard your complaints. Now it came to pass as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel that they looked toward the wilderness and behold the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The glory always comes before the provision. The glory always comes before the provision. So they were waiting and they saw the glory of the Lord. Then they were totally provided for. It's daily provision. There must first be the glory. You don't have enough money. You need to get into the glory. You don't have the right career. You need to get into the glory. You don't have a spouse that's correct. You need to get into the glory. You're not experiencing the favor of God. You need to get into the glory. If you want all the provisions of God, you got to get into the glory of God. It's the glory of God. The glory of God. Before every provision, there's the glory of God. The power of the vision of, the God, of God comes in the glory of God. The power of His provision comes in His glory. He promised that when the Lord returns, how would he come? He'd come in his glory. Then we will be provided for eternally. Before provision is always his glory. You need to get into the glory of God. Some people say, well, I, I'm not even getting my needs met. Have you been in the glory of God? Well, I pray. I'm not talking about just pray. Well, I read my Bible. I'm not talking about just reading your Bible. What's it take to get into the glory of God? If you don't experience the fullness of the glory of God, you haven't meditated the scriptures long enough, you haven't spoken to the Lord, where the Lord reveals himself to you in a word. When that revelation of the Lord hits you in a word, you have the glory of God on you. You can do anything. You can see everything. You can receive anything because it's the word made manifest to you by the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Bow your heads. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you.